Hello students. So the videos for tonight's class are going to be around spatial statistics. Uh, effectively, these are leveraging statistical processes and algorithms so that you can answer certain questions about the way things cluster or the way they're dispersed or the way they're oriented in a way that the output will give you a valid yes or no um, with whether it is statistically significant or not. Uh, these types of tools can allow us to answer things like are the way that a series of, of crimes or incidents clustered statistically significant given what you'd expect randomly? Or do you have neighborhoods that are clustered together uh, all with the same low value of unemployment? Or are there areas where there is a neighborhood with um, unexpectedly high unemployment given what's going on around it. Or if I happen to have uh, a series of neighborhoods that look one way, how can I use a tool to find the most similar matching ones to them that balance sort of the various inputs? You do not need to have any background in statistics for this class. This isn't a statistics class, it's a GIS class. And so really, the way I'll approach the tools today is just introduce you to them, describe their inputs, describe their outputs and their use, but we won't really dive into any of the statistical equations underpinning them. <clears throat> so if you're following along, uh, the data I'm going to drag in is from the April 9th Moran's folder. It's going to be tracts. And these are census tracts for the U.S. Um, for a series of metropolitan statistical areas. And each of them tells some um, geographic location, and then also if you peruse a little bit more, you can see some information about, um, you know, the people who are living there and how many are below poverty, uh, what the rent is, what the unemployment rate is, and so on. And the first tool I'm going to uh, be looking at is one called Moran's Eye. And so if you go to Analysis, Tools, Navigate down to Spatial Statistics, Mapping Clusters. It's going to be the one here, Cluster and Outlier Analysis. The purpose of this tool is to look at a series of inputs, and it'll then compare those inputs to an average value and tell you if there are census tracts or neighborhoods or polygons or whatever your input is, it will tell you is there a cluster of these that have a high value? Is there a cluster of these that have a low value? Is there a, an outlier, one that has a high value or a low value? Without showing you too deeply, this is what the output is gonna look like from a legend standpoint, right? So in this instance, if I'm inputting census tracts, it's actually gonna be looking and saying, hey, this census tract here, where my cursor is, if I compare this to an average and then compare what's going on around me, is my value high compared to the average? And more than that, is my value high and is what's going on around me also high? Right. So am I in an area of high unemployment, of high poverty, an area with a high concentration of Hispanic residents, an area with a high concentration of crime? Or perhaps am I in an area with low incidences of crime or low Hispanic population compared to an average and what else is going on around me? This is what helps you see areas of clustering and dispersion. Um, sorry, clustering and outliers, right? Areas where you see a lot of similar geographies huddled together and then helps you identify where there are outliers within those clusters. The most important thing that I just said there, though, is determining high versus low, you should be asking yourself, well, compared to what? Right? I'm only high if I compare myself to a certain value. And that all depends on what you input. If you click on the tool, give it a second to load, and you were just to load in the census tracts without any other input, then the value it would be comparing to, that sort of central mean, it would be looking at the unemployment rate or the poverty rate or whatever you choose to analyze for every census tract in the US. And there's no problem with that. You might want to do that. You might literally want to create an analysis that statistically compares every census tract to the average for the US for a certain value 
and determines where you're high or where you're low compared to that. But oftentimes you'll want to localize this. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. So if I zoom into Pittsburgh, for example, and I go to select with my lasso, and I just literally select just around Pittsburgh, it means that that central mean is now going to be Pittsburgh specific. It's only going to look at these census tracts, give me an average, and then my highs and my lows are going to be totally dependent on that. So again, you will determine what the quote unquote universe or the macro data set you want to compare to, but that's how you ultimately determine high compared to what or low compared to what. So if I were to drag in tracts, the real important thing will pop up next. Sorry, computer's being a bit slow. So I'm actually not going to run this. I'm going to show you the inputs. And then uh, I've already sort of ran them, and I'll walk through the outputs with you. But the really only important field for you to pick is this one, the input field. Uh, this is the value you're comparing. The census tracts themselves are the location, the geography, right? Census tract A is going to be next to B and C and so on. But to determine whether there's a cluster or there's an outlier or the values are not significant, I need to pick a value to analyze, right? And so any kind of numerical linear value here would work. You could compare rents, crime rates, um, you know, concentration of business types, population density, population change. But in this instance, I'll do poverty rate. The other two you may change. Uh, this just determines uh, kind of how I look at my neighborhood. So when I'm looking for clusters, inverse distance just sort of sets like I'm the center of my universe. And then the cluster pattern where I'm looking, it dissipates uh, at the or with a weight that is the inverse of my distance. So if you're a neighborhood that's 10 feet, there was a slight uh, jump in the video there. It kept cutting off after seven minutes. Um, so I believe we were just talking about the input field there. So I'll pick up right after. Um, after the field, the next thing is the uh, conceptualization of your spatial relationship. This is really just like, how do I determine the distance of clusters? You know, I mean, like, are we talking like, can clusters be 10 miles long, 20 miles long? Is it just sort of who's around me? Um, and there's probably two you'll use regularly. Inverse distance is fairly common. Inverse distance is effectively just, um, you know, the strength of finding a cluster dissipates at a rate that is the inverse of how far you are from me. So if you're 10 feet from me, you have a one-tenth influence on my cluster. If you're, um, you know, 100 feet from me, you're one over 100. So this one, there's no real threshold. Uh, it just sort of ultimately finds its own neighborhoods based on kind of the strength of proximity. Uh, a more logical one, um, it's easier to wrap your head around sometimes, is a fixed distance band. So maybe here you'd say, you know, clusters are defined uh, by things that are within 500 feet of each other or 1,000 feet. Uh, sometimes you can do contiguity, right? So clusters have to be touching each other. Um, up to you. You'll sort of make the determination what makes sense to you. So uh, I'm not going to run it because my computer's been slow. Uh, but I did run it. And again, the output comes back to you like this, right? You can begin to see patterns. And you'll start to see certain neighborhoods or census tracts have high rates of poverty and are surrounded by other areas that are high. And then you find yourself in interesting areas and islands, right? Like this area here, which would be around Carnegie Mellon and Squirrel Hill, where there is a, a low rates of poverty compared to Allegheny County, um, but that's surrounded roughly by higher areas, right? Now, these all together would fit that category, but as you start to move south or north from them, then you begin to get into sort of much uh, higher areas of poverty. Uh, if you were to run it for just Pittsburgh, right, it would change itself slightly. In this area here, becomes not significant. The values sort of aren't as uh, high as they were previously. And the shape shifts slightly um, because, again, we're not comparing it to the entirety of Allegheny County. The mean we're comparing it to now is just a selected area of Pittsburgh. Um, so that is uh, Moran's eye, uh, a good way of assessing where there are clusters of similar values and where there are outliers.